Bergamo. Uh, Bergamo is the postdoc researcher at the University of Bergamo. Credo, ma c'è un PowerPoint o no, una presentazione? No, 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 no,
I am a human person because I am constituted by a human body and I am essentially constituted by a body, Baker says, but not necessarily a human one. I am not necessarily constituted by a human body. For example, I could be constituted by a bionic body and so uh, I am a human body, I am a human person because I am constituted by a human body, but I am not essentially a human person. And notice that, of course, what all for me, all for you, uh, for beings like us as well. And notice that there are also persons, at least possible ones, which are quite different from me and you. Uh, okay, uh, God, if he exists or she exists, I don't know, uh, though being a person, according to our religious tradition, is constituted neither by a body nor by anything else. And, and moreover, according to Baker, something is material, if and only if it is a fundamental particle or it is ultimately constituted by an aggregate of fundamental particles. And therefore God, who is neither a fundamental particle nor a constituted being, is or would be a non-constituted and immaterial person. And indeed, Baker being a Christian, she is obviously committed just to the mere possibility of God's existence, but also to is, okay, I say is, uh, actual reality. Uh, the Christian commitment, moreover, surely prevents her from, from declaring the sheer possibility of other non-constituted material persons, such as angels described by at least part of our religious tradition of by, by, and raised by our, our Christian tradition. Um, furthermore, when, when discussing and rejecting the immaterialist doctrine according to which uh, beings like us are immaterial, non-constituted beings, something like Cartesian souls, Baker never hints at the idea that immaterial persons of this kind should be banned simply as impossible. Uh, so one can conclude uh, mm, while a being like you and me is a constituted person constituted by a human body there may also be immaterial persons not constituted by anything and therefore quite different from you and me. But now, it seems to me, it's not difficult to see that by Baker's own lights, a person cannot be our, our, our kind. And you can read a, a sort of abstract of my argument on the handout. <coughs> Suppose for a uh, Reductio. Uh, that person is my is my primary kind, and so that person is a primary kind. Given that there can be non-constituted immaterial persons, there is a, a possible world W, which among other things, I coexist with one such person. Let us say X, and. Let us say that X is, I don't know, something like a Cartesian soul. So, so uh, what is X's, X's primary kind? Well, I'm, I'm talking about possible worlds and it is a, just a useful device. I, I don't believe that possible world, possible worlds exist, just to say that. I, I think it is a, a useful way to, 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 to convey a point. So, um, what is X's primary kind? 
Well, X is a person, so it belongs to the kind of person. But person is a primary kind. And uh, we have seen that every concrete object has exactly one primary kind. And so X's primary kind is person. And I am a person too, even in W. I am essentially a person because by hypothesis, person is my actual primary kind. And so my primary kind in W is person. Therefore, there are two things W in this possible world whose primary kind is person, X, and me. Given that, primary kinds determine the persistence conditions of the objects that belong to them. X and me and W share the same persistence conditions. And yet, I cannot survive the disappearance of all bodies. I am essentially constituted by a body. Baker says, well, this is not true of X. And me and W do not share the same persistence conditions. And so we have reached a contradiction. In W, we do share the same persistence conditions, and we do not share the same persistence conditions. And so person is not, <laughs> after all, my primary kind, contrary to the initial assumption. And the same, of course, holds for you and for beings like us as well. And uh, this, I, I believe, is a rather surprising conclusion, a surprising conclusion indeed, uh, given Baker's emphasis on our belonging to a primary kind of person. So, if if one wanted to, so to say, to say, to say the spirit of their, their proposal, one has to provide a, a person involving primary kind for beings like us, a person involving primary kind uh, compatible with our main philosophical assumptions. But what exactly should this kind be? Well, of course, not a human person. But we are indeed human persons because we are constituted by human bodies. But if human person were our primary kind, then we would essentially be human persons. And Baker, we have to say, explicitly denies this. According to her, we are essentially embodied persons, but not essentially human. As I've said, uh, we could be constituted by bionic bodies, so we could be non-human persons. Um, this, however, uh, immediately suggests that uh, prima facie promising solution. Baker could say that our primary kind is embodied person. But what is um, an embodied person? Uh, two interpretations suggest, suggest themselves. Uh, according to the first interpretation, a bodied person is equivalent to person having a body, where having a body is a relation that is instantiated in the case of a person constituted by a body, but also, for example, in the case of a teaching soul or something similar, uh, a non constituted immaterial person causally interacting with a body. According to the second interpretation, a 
bonded person is equivalent to a person constituted by a body. And in what follows, I'm going to make two points. Uh, first point is that uh, Baker could not endorse a person having a body as our power in kind because this choice would be compatible with a philosophical tenet. According, um, the second point is just that person constituted by a body is uh, at least prima facie uh, a promising candidate to be our primary candidate. So, let us consider the first point. As I've said, according to Baker, a being like me and you is constituted by a human body. A human body, however, does not necessarily constitute a being like us. In order to constitute me, for example, my body has to be in a certain favorable circumstances. That uh, is, well, no. Uh, favorable circumstances are uh, uh, intrinsic and uh, environmental conditions conducive to development and maintenance of a personal mental life, a first person perspective. Um, in general, if um, entity A constitutes uh, an entity B belonging to the primary kind K, uh, entity A is in uh, K favorable circumstances. This is roughly what Baker says. And I suppose that the person having a body is my primary kind. I consider a possible world, W, inhabited among other things by me and by a, an immaterial, no, constitute the person, X which causally interacts with a body and we could say again that X is sort of Cartesian soul. So, but X is a person, is a person having a body and so it belongs to the kind person having a body. But person having a body, by hypothesis, is primarily kind every concrete object has exactly one primary kind. So X's primary kind is person having a body, and I am a person having a body too, even in that or even in this possible world. Uh, and essentially, again, I'm essentially a person having a body because by hypothesis, person having a body is my actual primary kind. And so my primary kind in W is person having a body. So again, there are two things in W. This primary kind is person having a body, X and me. And given that, primary kinds determine the persistence conditions of the objects that they want to have. <coughs> X and me in W share the same persistence conditions. But now consider, consider this. Uh, let's consider this fact. I am essentially constituted by a body, as Becker says, so I am constituted by a body in possible world W. And this body has to be in person having a body favorable circumstances. Let us go see this kind of circumstances. X however, is not constituted by a body, so while I cannot survive the disappearance of all instances of C, this is not true of X. So X and me and W do not share the same persistence conditions. And again, we have a, a contradiction. Uh, share the same persistence conditions and we do not share the same persistence conditions. Um, and so, a person having a body is not my primary kind, uh, contrary to the initial assumption. 
and this uh, and this all for for you uh, and for things like that. And that 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 is uh, that was my first point. Uh, let us now turn to the second point, uh, which is simply that a person constituted by a body is is uh, well, if not promising, uh, it's a better candidate to be our our primary kind. The objection raised against person and person having a body have been based on the fact that these kinds have made members with different persistence conditions. And so they, they cannot be primary kinds. I think that the person constituted by a body does not incur this style of objection. And so at least for this for, for this reason is a better candidate to be our primary kind. But is this proposal acceptable by Baker's own lights? But I think that uh, it, it, it seems to me that, that it is so. I think that by and large it is. Um, also it seems. Uh, it is true that if our primary kind were person constituted by a body, then we would share our fundamental nature with some unexpected entities. A Martian person, for example, let's say AX, constituted by a silicon-based body, is a person constituted by a body. This means that beings like us are fundamentally the same as X in this scenario, this could be considered a counterintuitive consequence of the present proposal. But if this is so, then the same holds for Baker's original proposal. Um, given that, according to her, X and us are fundamentally the same kind, and the same kind of thing, namely a person. So Baker should have no problem in adopting a person constituted by a body and its supposedly counterintuitive consequences. But still, uh, a friend of Baker, Baker herself, uh, may want to reject this proposal on the grounds that uh, assuming that person constituted by a body is my primary kind seems to, seems to trivialize my being constituted by my body. Well, choosing person, choosing person as my primary kind does not say anything about my being a constituted, a constituted entity. Uh, okay, I think that in a sense, uh, if one assumes that person constituted by a body is my primary kind, it is indeed trivial that I am constituted by my body. But I also think that there is a clear and important sense in which even assuming that a person constituted by a body is my primary kind, saying that I am constituted by my body is not at all trivial. And let me briefly explain this point. <coughs> if a person constituted by a body is my primary kind, I am essentially constituted by a body. And whenever I exist, there is a body which should be properly called my body that constitutes me. And so, in a sense, it is trivial true that whenever I exist, I am constituted by my body. <coughs> but this does not imply that the object I usually refer to, calling it my body, is indeed something that constitutes me. Uh, in fact, according to Baker, what I commonly call my body constitutes me if and only if it satisfies some complex, sometimes very complex conditions uh, listed in a carefully uh, elaborated 
definition of, of the Constitution, um, which is a very complex definition, as some of you, uh, perhaps all of you, know. Uh, so, merely saying that I'm fundamentally a person constituted by a body, my body, what should properly call my body, uh, does not settle the question of whether I am constituted by what in ordinary life I call my body, scare both. And yet, uh, assuming that person constituted by a body is our primary kind, may sound a bit uh, suspect anyway. Being an idea that is far less straightforward and natural than Baker's original proposal. Indeed, attributing to us as our primary kind of familiar kind of person it just seems as an obvious rule. We all commonly say we are persons. Uh, on the contrary, on the contrary, proposing person constituted by a body as our primary kind is a far less intuitive choice. Uh, the sense of constitution uh, issue according to which constitution is not identity is a, a technical one, of course, and so person constituted by a body it's not an everyday expression, being instead a clear example of a, a term of art. Yet, why should one think that we have at our disposal, in our everyday talk, a complete and satisfying characterization of our fundamental nature? We commonly say we are persons. Right, and my proposal does vindicate this common sense judgment. But I think it is an equally commonsensical idea that our basic nature could be at least partially elusive, and that spelling it out might require some theoretical findings, some theoretical speculations. And so I'm going to conclude. Uh, Baker's general purpose in metaphysics is to firmly locate the familiar objects we encounter every day in the complete inventory of what exists in the complete inventory of the world. And our general attitude is to vindicate common sense in everyday life, and, uh, uh, and it seems to me uh, the right attitude to have. But uh, the fact is that proposing person constituted by a body as our primary kind is perhaps not completely in line with this attitude, I admit. But I think it is an option worth exploring to save Baker's general position from what seems to me a, a peculiar flaw. And that's it. Oh, thank you. I think that, that was a very clever paper. Very nice to you. Um, I, I meant to uh, emphasize that we are material persons. I think person is our primary kind. We are persons, and all persons, I believe, essentially have first-person perspectives. We, however, also have further essential properties. One is that we're embodied. We're also human persons. That is to say, the way I figured it, I figured try to uh, do it, what I'm saying was, we begin body, we begin existence in body, uh, as we begin existence constituted by human organisms. But we don't have to always be constituted by human organisms, as you say. We could have bionic bodies, I think, I think we're well on our way to bionic bodies, not, not generally, but to paralyzed people and so forth. And I think there you know, very well could be immaterial persons, like God, who has no body at all, but still has this first-person perspective. So uh, it's the first-person perspective that's our, prim that's our primary kind of property. But we also have other essential properties, such as being embodied. 
But what, one of our, we could be embodied by it, not only bionic bodies, we could be embodied by a spiritual, what St. Paul calls spiritual bodies. Um, but but we're, we are of a, our, our, the way we're persons is embodied, that we can't be unembodied. So I don't think that any of your reductios actually um, uh, make that, address that point. But I thought that was a very, this was very nice. Okay. Um, yes. I think that you say that um, primary kinds determine um, persistence conditions and. Uh, Let us consider a, an entity, X. I can tell you the answer to this question. Yeah, I, 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 okay, no, I, I don't know. Uh, Primary kinds do determine persistence conditions, and the persistence condition for us, us, is that our first-person perspectives, that our exemplification of a first-person perspective continues. That's what our that's uh, that's our persistence condition. It's circular because I believe in primitive persistence, but that's another question. Um, so is, so is it our is the degeneration of our bodies is irrelevant uh, because what our persistence conditions are, my, our persistence condition is determined by our continuing to have to exemplify the first person perspective that we exemplify. Continue to be. The, this exemplar of the first person perspective. Do you have persistence conditions for persons in general? Yeah, this, is, this is my persistence condition for persons in general. All persons, even disembodied persons. Right, that is, right. That is okay. definitely my, pers my, my um, uh, um, for persistence condition for persons. However, we also have this other essential property which is not not going to determine whether we're persons or not, but it's going to determine Human the person. kind of person we are and whether the kind of persons as the kind of person we are is we begin existence in, uh, uh, constituted by a human organism. Yeah. Uh, this strikes me as rather puzzling because you say we are essentially embodied. Yes. So so we cannot survive the disappearance of old bodies because we are essentially involved. So uh, this is an essential property of beings like us. But this is this property determined? Is this property determined by our belonging to a primary kind of person? You 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 say no. No. However, I would like to make. A Point that I, 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 I'm not sure you emphasize. There's a difference between my being em necessarily embodied by this body, not that, but by somebody or yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I'm not stuck with this body, I, but I am stuck with somebody or other because that is an essential property of mine, is to have somebody or another. This makes room for things like resurrection of the body. It makes room for all kinds of things that you might want or might not want to make room for. Yeah, yeah. But if you if you admit a, a pure metaphysical possibility of uh, an instantaneous disappearance of all bodies, uh, I cannot survive this event. And so this is. This clearly counts as a, a member of my, I don't know, negative persistence conditions. And so this has to be determined by my belonging to my primary kind. Why not? If all bodies in this world were destroyed, you might continue and you might not continue. You would, might continue if by God's will he decided to resurrect you then you would continue, because he would resurrect you, not with this body, but this body's gone. Well, but nonetheless, with, this, with some spirit, we don't have any idea what a spiritual body is, but a spiritual body, or some other kind of body. That's all the claim is, embodiment, not 
this body, not this kind of body, but rather embodied. Yeah, but let us suppose that uh, all bodies, spiritual bodies, material bodies, bionic bodies, uh, are um, quickly disappear in instance by by, by then we would due to all an e super duper evil demon. That I, I, I cannot survive, of course, because I am essentially embodied, and essentially constituted by a body. If all bodies were destroyed, including spiritual bodies, granted, we would all be destroyed. Period. Right. Persistence, yes. that's our, pers oh, because, <coughs> our now, first person perspective would go. If I can be the radical interpreter, yeah. Yeah, I think what Len is stressing that we are committed to have one body, but not necessarily, could be spiritual. Yeah, but, but, but that's perfectly fine. Oh, okay. I, 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 I agree. It's not, it's not my point. The thing is that we cannot survive the disappearance of our body. And, okay, a bionic body, a spiritual body, a um, flesh and blood body. That's true. Uh, this is, okay, okay, but this is, we cannot survive the disappearance of our body and, let's say, a universal catastrophe in which uh, all bodies disappear, then I cannot physically survive the disappearance of all bodies. And this, this, uh, this fact is a member of the class of my negative persistence conditions and these classes determined or should be determined by my uh, by my belonging to the to my primary kind but it seems to me that the person as a primary kind does not does not determine this this this, this specific case uh, of, of persistence condition because a soul obviously can't metaphysical survive this this uh, Catastrophic event. Another, another question? Or? <laughs> no, I have the question. Another question. Last question. So, one, one question to Baker and, uh, and to you. But this is talking about gen generic dependence. So, you mean that it's essential for a person, in her view, to, have, to be dependent? generically on a body, it doesn't hold for a, it must be specific dependence, so specifically dependent person being specifically dependent on a specific body, so you are dependent on your body, <coughs> or... Yeah, my body is just the body that is constituting me now, and so it, she's right, uh, I, I may have a bionic body or a spiritual body or Human body. So, and you can change through time your bodies. The body that that now constitutes me is my body, almost by definition. Yeah, yeah, but yes, but tomorrow you could imagine that you change completely your body, still being yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You, you yeah, you could agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or this is clarification. This is what she said. Then I, I think she's right. You agree on that? You both agree on the fact that you can change every day your body. You please. Just a very very short question. What? What do you mean with a spiritual body? Could you say something more? I would say I would just refer you to Saint Paul. I would refer you to Saint Paul. I have no idea what a spiritual body is, and he doesn't either. Um, that is, that's just, it's just what the way Paul described resurrection in 1 Corinthians 50, I think it was, and 2 Corinthians 5, that's where, that's, the, look at those places, that's all, that's the, all we have to understand resurrection of the body, we have a doctrine, resurrection of the body, some people have a doctrine, resurrection of the body, and what that means is, I think, fairly obscure. Yeah, but Lindy, you <laughs> say that God, if he wanted, if existed and wanted... God what? What can you say, If God wanted, could uh, existed and wanted to uh, uh, have your uh, individual self uh, surviving the death of your body without any body, any other body, so you put a limit to God infinite power that way, right? 
Because you say it's a mystery what the spiritual body is, why shouldn't it be able to also have yourself without any body? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We, have, we have to go to lunch. No, no. <laughs>